Hi guys, Alec Pierce at the ranch again, <clears throat> and I'm inside today. Uh, it's cold outside. It's about minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, I don't know, something minus 100 Celsius, a silly system, but anyway, whatever it is, <laughs> I'm old, okay? So, uh, and, and I'm inside today, and it's really toasty worm. You can see it's toasty worm because I'm standing right beside our uh, wood-burning fireplace. Uh, and that's what I want to talk about for just a moment, because we're pretty proud of this fireplace. You're darn right we're pretty proud of it. Our local propane company doesn't like our fireplace, but we sure like it. We have a, a Nest thermostat on, our, um, uh, on the house here, running the, the fireplace. I have it set for 55 degrees. So if the temperature inside the house gets down to 55 degrees, what is 55, uh, Kevin? That's about 12. Then it gets down to 55, then the furnace comes on and, and it keeps the house toasty. Uh, the furnace never comes on. With the Nest thermostat, you can check on the history. And I can go to, to for the month of December and I can see that it was on for, for four days. It was on for one hour on Thursday. It like, it, it's fantastic. So our propane company doesn't like us. But we sure love this wood-burning fireplace. First of all, we have lots of wood. We have 100 acres of bush here. And Diane and I go out just for fun, and we enjoy it. It's good for us. We cut down most, mostly dead wood, and then and we cut it and split it and stack it. Uh, I think if you take a look, you'll see that there's actually a, a video uh, uh, on, on our great woodshed that we built to make things so easy for us, because we're both old. Even though we enjoy doing this work, there is a limit to what we can do. So we have a really efficient woodshed and a system for doing all of this. Bottom line is that we use our wood stove, and this actually heats the entire house. Now, I know <clears throat> that many, many people with wood-burning fireplaces would love to heat the whole house, but it doesn't work really well. Uh, air doesn't really travel well through a house on its own. So this particular room, our family room, if you like, recreation room, family room, is 30 feet square, 30 by 30. And uh, this room is always nice and warm when the fireplace is on. We keep it, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's got to be 70, 75 degrees. So that's uh, 21, 22, 23 degrees. And that's just, just nice, maybe a bit warmer sometimes. And uh, the wood burning fireplace works really, really well because it's heating this room. Now, I'm just going to quickly tell you about the wood burning fireplace. It is, I'm going to show you the back in a minute. It's what's called a zero clearance wood burning fireplace. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute. But you see, it's got a firebox with a fire in it. That's not too difficult. And then around that firebox, which is about this big, you can see it there, around that firebox is a bigger box. It's about like this, made of steel as well. We call that the hot box. The hot box is around the firebox, so the air in that hot box gets hot. Now, <clears throat> this fireplace comes with a fan, and the fan draws air in through the bottom, sucks air at the bottom, and that air goes around that hot box, gets warmed up, then blows out through here, and heats this room up. That's the way it works. It's really very simple. The fan's on a thermostat. When the hot box gets hot enough, uh, then the fan comes on and blows the air into this room. Great. But it's not warm upstairs. Two-story house, so it's not warm upstairs. Very difficult to get air to move, even though we have a fan at the top of the stairs, an open stairwell, and so on. So we decided some time ago that we would try to, uh, to make it a central heating, wood-burning fireplace. Central heating. We do have central heating in the house, of course, coming from the furnace, and, and the, the heat from the furnace goes to every room. Well, why can't you do that with a wood stove? As a matter of fact, this particular wood stove is designed to accept a central heating system. It's just figuring it out and getting it hooked up. It's sometimes a little bit more difficult than what they say in the manual. Let me explain what I did. I did it quickly, easily, and cheaply too. Uh, if you buy all the accessories from the wood burning company, it can be a lot of money. The wood stove itself is quite a bit of money. And then if you want to add central heating, you're looking at maybe $2,000, $2,500 for all the bits and pieces to make a central heating. I did it for a fraction of that. And I'm going to show you how it works, okay? I'll just point this out. You see what we also did? We have a wood box here. And I built this wood box out of extremely heavy plywood. And then I sealed it, all the seams, I sealed it, and then I put a finish on it. The finish doesn't matter. We have a stone hearth. And I made it out of that heavy, heavy plywood, and I sealed it for a very simple reason. Sometimes when the wood comes in, it's cold and wet. Sometimes it has snow on it. Well, we can take that wood, and we, can, and we, don't, we don't abuse this box, but if you toss it in, it can bang a little bit. And then, of course, the snow melts. So this wood box that's on here has to be strong and it has to be waterproof. So that's why I did that. So we have a good wood box here which holds enough wood for about two, maybe three days of a continuous burning. And just outside the back door right there, we have a, a wagon full of firewood that we brought down from our wood shed. And that wagon load will last for about uh, 10 days, maybe two weeks. So we bring wood in, a couple armfuls in, throw it in here, and we're good for a few days. We'll make it very easy. Again, we're old. It has to be 
easy. So that's the original way that this fireplace worked. A fan sucked air in the bottom and blew air out the top. Heated up this room really, really well, but not the rest of the house. I had a couple of problems. First of all, I wanted the rest of the house to have some heat anyway. I don't, I don't want it to be hot upstairs. That's where we sleep. But I want it to be at least a little bit warm. That's the first problem. The second problem was that the fan that sucks in the air and blows it out was not a very good fan. Uh, we've had this now here for about 12 years. I replaced that fan three times. Yeah. And the, uh, the wood-burning fireplace company wants $200 each time. It's a lot of money. I've tried to find that fan somewhere else, but it, it, a similar fan that will fit just doesn't work. So I was getting tired of replacing that fan. Third reason, it's a bit noisy. You're sitting down here chatting with your friends, listening to music, watching TV, and this fan's running. And even with a, even with a, 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 a dimmer control, a variable speed control on the fan, it still was noisy. So there were a number of reasons why I wanted to change this to central heating, and it's worked out really, really well for us. Let's go uh, back to the back behind this, because this is a wall, obviously, and behind this wall is the furnace room and uh, several other utensils and, of course, the back of the wood-burning fireplace. And once we're back there, you'll be able to see the whole system. It works really well. Maybe there's some ideas in there for you as well. Okay, we're going to take a little trip back in just a minute. Okay, guys, so now, uh, here we are now uh, behind the fireplace. That wall there is on the other side of that is where the fireplace, we just there. Okay, this is the back behind the fireplace. I need to point out a couple of things so you understand how we engineered this whole thing. It's pretty neat. First of all, this is the, the, the furnace. This is a propane, high efficiency furnace. 97% efficiency, they say. I don't know what that means, but they, they suck dust in anyway. I, I don't know exactly what it means, but apparently it doesn't waste any fuel. And, and it's actually pretty neat, actually, because, you, and you probably know this if you have natural gas or propane, the exhaust pipe is a piece of PVC pipe. Uh, a two-inch piece of PVC pipe. So we don't have a chimney anymore. We used to have an oil burner before. We actually had to have a chimney to get rid of the exhaust gases. So I guess it's more efficient. And uh, the furnace sits here right in the middle of the house. This is the dead center of the house, right down the middle of the house. Okay. And uh, obviously this is a hot air duct blows the warm air out. On the other side, <coughs> I'm sorry, on the other side is the cold air return. So the, there's a big duct that runs right down the middle of the house. One side is the cold air return, brings the cold air from all over the house into this furnace. The furnace warms it up, then it blows it back out, out this, through this duct here, the warm air return duct, and it blows it back into the house. And off of that warm air duct, all the different tubes run out to the different rooms to, to have a warm register in each room. So that's the way the central heating system works in most homes. I'm not going to explain more than that. That's pretty straightforward. So how did we make our wood-burning fireplace work with the propane furnace central heating? Really is very simple. This is the back of our fireplace. Now you notice at the front of the fireplace, the fire was burning. It was hot, really hot. In fact, you, you don't want to touch the glass, that's for sure. You don't want to touch that black hot box. It's really, really hot. This, you see? This is what's meant by zero clearance fireplace. Zero clearance means that you don't have to have any clearance between the fireplace and combustible products. Now it still wouldn't be really smart to lay paper, newspapers, or dry wood up against this, but you could, you could. Technically, you can put anything up right up against this box, which encircles the entire fireplace. It's heavily insulated, and, and this, is, this is cold, okay? Um, we, don't, we don't put combustible material, but that's what's meant. You, you could put combustible material right up against zero clearance, all right, which is really handy. Now, as I mentioned earlier, down in the middle of this big box is the hot box, the fire box, if you like. Now, the fire box is where you actually put the wood and start the fire and, and, and it burns. And it's, it's a small box, about 20 by 20 by 20, roughly, with the doors on it. Now, one of the problems with a traditional fireplace is that you start the fire and the fire draws air in from the room, burns the wood, and then the chimney goes out. Okay? We have a chimney. Here's the chimney right here, and the chimney's warm. The chimney goes out, to the, out through the roof. In fact, if you look back, you'll find one of my earlier videos, I, I talked about cleaning the chimney and, and sweeping your own chimney. Yeah, yeah. That's the chimney goes up, up to the top of the house, out the roof. So the exhaust gases, the burnt gases from the wood fire goes out through here. But we don't take air from the room for the fire. If you do, if you take air from the room for the fire, and you've probably experienced this. If you sit in front of the fireplace, your face is warm, but your back is cold because the fireplace is sucking air from the room right across your back into the fireplace and then out the chimney. 
So it's actually taking air from the room. Now that's not very smart for a couple of reasons. First of all, the room is where you're trying to heat. You're, you're trying to warm up the air in that room. And yet the fireplace is sucking that warmed air out of that room into the fireplace. So if you could get rid of that somehow, it'd be great. Now we've done that. If you take a peek right here, you'll see that here's a pipe right here. And it's insulated. You can see it's insulated. This pipe actually goes outside. It's only about 10 feet to the outside wall. And there's a grill on the outside to keep the birds and the spiders out. <laughs> and that is actually the cold air feed to the fire box, to the hot box, to, to where the fire is. So that comes in, goes right down the side and comes in at the bottom of the fire box. Yeah, and I can control that with a damper, all right, to, re to restrict the amount coming in or that more in, depending on if I want the fire to blaze up or to die down. And, and that's the cold air coming into the firebox. So it goes in, the fire burns, and the exhaust goes up the chimney. That's a completely separate system. One little box, cold air from the outside, and exhaust gases out, okay? Now, the firebox is surrounded by what I call the hot box, another box that's inside of here. And it's, it's, it's about three feet by three feet by three feet. And it's all around that firebox. So the air in that hot box gets really hot from the firebox. And that's the air that you use to heat your house. On the other side, I explained with that fan that came with it, it draws air in around that hot box, blows it right back out and heats up that room. Wonderful. If you want that room heated. Ah, but watch. In the top of this box, there are holes. There's a big hole here, there's a big hole here. There's even a big hole in the bottom. If you could look down there, don't bother. If you could look down, you see that this box is about six to eight inches off the ground. There's actually room underneath. If you had this fireplace on the upper floor of a house, you can actually blow air down into the basement from the bottom. So there's holes in the top of this box. And those holes go through all this insulation into that hot box. Exactly. You get the idea? So all I did was open up one of those holes, take out the insulation, one second. Here's the lid. There's the insulation. There it is right there. I just took that out, okay? And then I put a piece of stove pipe down into the hole. You got it? And then I put this box on, a little bit of insulation, and then this thing, a fan and then these pieces of pipe and they go right up into the hot air return can you see up there Kevin you can see how I put that right up into the hot air return that's the hot air return coming from our fire from our furnace and that return that big square return goes into the whole house it feeds every register in the whole house so let's do it again take out the hole insulation and when you look down in there you're looking into that hot box exactly right then this is on there. What's this? Well, I'm going to show you. There's a little snap on there. I snap that off of there. And, aha. Uh -huh. So there's the whole darn, oh, that's nice warm air. Oh, is that ever hot? Hot air coming out from the hot box. And then there's a filter on here. You see the filter? And you want to have a filter on. <clears throat> because, <coughs> I'm so sorry. <coughs> because you sometimes get dust, little chips of wood, and, and so on. It is, it is a fireplace, a wood burning fireplace. So there's always a little bit of uh, stuff in the air. So we have a filter on here. This filter material is made of spun glass or fiberglass. Not, don't use polypropylene because it'll melt with the heat. But this is just, and we change that once in a while. And then it goes up into the fan. There's a little damper in there. Here's the fan. Yeah, listen for a sec. Hear that? I can speed it up when I want to. Turn it back down. Put the lid back on. See how easy that is? And that fan is a, is, is a big circular squirrel case type of fan. <clears throat> and it's controlled by a, a rotary switch over here. I'm not sure if you can see that, Kevin. That's okay. It's just an ordinary outlet in the wall with an ordinary dimmer type rotary switch. It needs to be a motor type. Of <coughs> I'm so sorry rotary switch that controls the speed of the fan so I can send it low if I'm watching TV it doesn't make very much noise or if we're going to be away or overnight we turn it on high and it blows a lot of air and up into the ductwork it's just that simple now the beauty of this is <coughs> even though the fireplace is in our rec room it heats the whole house in fact when I'm up in the morning I get up and I go into the washroom uh, first thing in the morning I, I, and right there there's a there's a warm air register 
put my hand over it, I can feel air, warm air being blown out of that register from our fireplace. That's right. So, a wood burning fireplace is fun. It's good for you. Um, and, and you can use it to heat your whole home if you have this type of a system. This is not exactly what was in the instructions, but it works beautifully. We've had it now for two winters, and we just love it. It's quiet, and to some extent it's automatic as well. Out in the other room, there's a thermostat, a little, it's called a, a, a disc type of thermostat on the firebox. And so when, when the fire dies out, this shuts off. Yeah, of course. But when you start a new fire, as a hot box, the fire box starts to warm up. The disc measures that, and when it gets hot enough, it automatically turns this on. All I do in here, I can turn it on and off if I want to, or I can adjust the speed. But there's a thermostat that decides whether or not the fan should be blowing. Blows when it's hot, doesn't blow when it's cold. So the whole thing is smooth, automatic, almost maintenance-free, and does a great job. Anyway, maybe that'll help you. Maybe you have a wood-burning fireplace and are wondering how you can make it more efficient and make it easier to use and warm your whole house. There's some ideas there. Give me some comments or some questions if you like. Hope you enjoyed that. Alec Pierce at the ranch. See you again soon.